Michel Barnier informed us about uh, the current state of the negotiations. Uh, we are in a crucial phase, definitely, uh, but so far our progress is uh, not uh, sufficient to uh, call in and set up uh, another council, um, and uh, we're waiting for further progress. Uh, is it a deal this week, yes or no? Deal this week or not? As a politician who is very much involved in European politics, I remain an optimist. What kind of compromise is possible with the UK on Brexit? On Brexit? <laughs> Many compromises, but uh, uh, the room for manoeuvre is very much limited and our British friends know exactly um, where are, um, our discussions are. Milk crystal ball. Unfortunately, I would love to have one. Uh, we are determined, we are committed to find a good deal. We know that uh, it's better than a no deal. Uh, we know how important it is for the United Kingdom. So we will listen carefully to what Michel Barnier has to say to us because he wanted to uh, uh, intense discussions with the British negotiator in the uh, recent days. Uh, we will have a close look at what uh, customs union would mean for us because it's in between the withdrawal agreement and the future relationship. So, of course, it's a little bit special to discuss the two of it. We are ready, we are open, but of course we want to see the details. And there is some hostility, some hostility to the idea of an arbitration panel which could end any temporary arrangement. What are your views on that? Well, if we end any sort of temporary uh, arrangement, this is to be a, a bilateral decision from the uh, EU27 and from the United Kingdom at the same time. And we have to know at that moment what sort of solution uh, there is for uh, the Irish border. Uh, this is what we are going to discuss. Um, why has fish become such a big issue when it comes to this temporary customs union? It has not become a big issue. It has been a big issue from the beginning, but simply now that we are discussing partly about the future relationship, this is one of the key issues of the future relationship, so now it's on the table. Do you feel like the EU is prepared for a no-deal scenario? We are working on it. This is not our preferred scenario, as you of understand, but we are working on it because even if we have an agreement, we don't know whether the European Parliament or the British Parliament would ratify the, uh, the agreement. So uh, we have uh, a draft law in the Parliament in France preparing for national measures in order to protect the rights of British citizens living in France, of French nationals coming back to France from the United Kingdom, and uh, to ease the uh, circulation between the UK and the continent. This would be temporary measures, but this is needed to be prepared for any sort of scenario. How much time do we have? Not much, as you know. Looking <laughs> hard for a deal, there are a number of, uh, of important issues that we still have to, to get bottomed out. Um, and, but we can't rush it. We have to get the right deal. This is an agreement that will endure for, for many years, so we have to make sure that we get it right, and we have to take the time to make sure that it's right. You haven't got any time. Um, we haven't set a particular deadline. Um, obviously, we have to be mindful of the parliamentary arrangements in the UK. We have to legislate for, uh, for, the, for the deal that we get, so, but it's important that we take the time to, to get it right. Are you saying there's still hope for a November summit? Well, let's let the negotiations play out. We are working hard for a deal. Everybody is straining every sinew to make sure that we, we get a deal, but we have to get a deal that's right for the UK, right for the EU, and one that will be acceptable to the UK Parliament.